Hi YouTube, this is Mike, also known as the Wizard of Odds, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to calculate the odds in the game of Super Kino. Super Kino is the same as regular Kino, except if the first ball drawn by the game matches a number picked by the player, then the player gets a 4x multiplier. And it is the same mathematically, by the way, as the game Power Kino. In that game, it is the last ball drawn that matters, not the first number, but mathematically, it is the same thing. So I took the liberty of already putting in the pay table in a spreadsheet here, as well as making a bunch of different blank tables that we will fill in as we go. First, let's work out the combinations in regular Kino. And let's, let's take the case of picking eight numbers and catching three as an example. And I'm going to assume that you already understand the combin function in Excel, but if not, I will go over that a little bit more slowly at the end of the video. But for now, in that situation, the number of ways the player can catch three out of eight is the number of ways the player can choose three winning numbers out of the 20 drawn by the game times the number of ways the player can choose five losing numbers out of the 60 numbers the game didn't pick. So there we go. That number of combinations is 6,226,123,640. And um, we can copy and paste the same formula down through the whole table, being careful to put a dollar sign in front of the A's because as we copy and paste it, we don't want that A column for the number of catches to change. And the number of picks is in this column 20, so we don't want that to change. And another problem that's gonna happen is if we do this right now, we're gonna get an error message if the number of catches is greater than the number of picks. So let's head off that problem right now. So we're gonna use this formula. If the number of catches is less than or equal to the number of picks, we do that formula that I just said. Otherwise, we're gonna put in a zero. And again, let's put a dollar sign in front of the A and the 20. And now we're ready to copy and paste this formula down. And one more, one more row. So there we go. This is the number of combinations for any given number of picks and catches. So the probability for any given outcome is going to be the number of combinations for the given situation divided by the total for that number of picks in column, excuse me, in row 32. So we can copy and paste that formula down through the whole table. So this is giving, this gives us the number of, the probability for any given number of catches and number of picks. For example, the, the probability for a pick eight of catching zero is about 8.8%, about 26.6% for catching one, 32.8% for catching two, and so on. Next, let's work on the return of the game before calculating the effect of the multiplier rule. So the base return is simply going to be the probability of any given event times what it pays up here in the pay table. And let's copy and paste that formula down. So there we go. Here are our, um, here is the base return of the game. For example, with pick one, it's 75%. For pick two, it's 66.14%, and so on. It generally decreases as the number of picks goes up because the probability of catching that first ball 
is more as the number of picks increases. So the effect of that super Kino multiplier rule increases as the number of picks increases. So next, let's work on the, the probability that the bonus feature is going to help us. So what is the probability that the player catches that first ball? Well, it's going to depend on the number of catches the player gets in the first place. For example, if the player catches three, the probability that that first ball drawn as a catch is going to be three divided by 20. And we can copy and paste that formula down. It's, you know, it's really quite simple. For example, if the, if the player only caught one ball, there's a 5% chance it was that first ball drawn. If he, if he catches two balls, there is a 10% chance that one of those two is the first ball drawn. And to me, that's kind of obvious. Um, I hope I don't need to explain that further. So the probability that this feature helps us, and let's again look at the situation of catching three out of eight as an example, is the probability that the situation happens in the first place, which we can get in the probability table. So let's go three and eight times the probability of catching that first ball, which is in this table here that we just worked on. And in referring to the probability of catching the first ball, that's always in column B. So let's put a dollar sign in front of that. So that's telling us that the probability that the feature helps us if we catch three out of eight is about 3.2%. And let's copy and paste that formula down. So this is showing us the probability that this feature actually helps us. Next, let's calculate the effect of this 4x multiplier rule is to the total return of the game. So that is going to be the probability that the feature helps us, which we already calculated in this table here, times the associated number in the pay table times three. Why are we multiplying by three, you might ask? Again, the rules state that if the player catches that first ball drawn by the game, then he gets a 4x multiplier. But we already accounted for 1x in the base return of the game, so the player is basically getting an extra 3x due to the feature. That's why we're multiplying by 3 and not 4. Basically, we already counted the other 1. And let's copy and paste that formula down through the whole table. And yeah, so this is telling us their contribution to the return because of a feature. For example, with a pick eight, this is telling us the player is getting 41.91% of his return just from the feature. So the total return is simply the base return from up here, plus the feature return. And let's copy and paste that formula down. And voila, uh, there is the total return of the game found in row 135 down here. Uh, to go over that, it's 86.25% for picking one, 85.98% for picking two, and I see it has a greatest value of 92.99% for the pick six. So if you play this game with this pay table, be sure to pick six numbers. And by the way, these returns are higher than you would normally see in a casino. The game maker, IGT, Let's ha, let's has a range of pay tables from about 85% to 94%, and the casino manager or the slot manager may choose which one he wants to use. You would only see a pay table this liberal in a very competitive environment, like in one of the locals' casinos here in Las Vegas. 
on the strip, you're more likely to see about 88%. So that's it. Um, that is how to calculate the return in Super Kino. And if you understood it, feel free to stop watching here, like the video if you liked it, better yet subscribe to my channel. But I'm going to go on a little bit to go a little bit more slowly over that combinations function next. And if you're leaving me, thanks for watching YouTube. Bye. So this is the remedial part of this video where I'm going to go over the combinations function a little bit more slowly. An example I like to use is how many ways can you choose five cards out of a 52 card deck without regard to order? So the answer to that is there are 52 ways you can draw that first card. Then there are 51 cards left that you might draw for the second card, 50 for the third, 49 for the fourth, and 48 for the fifth. So with regard to order, there are 311,875,200 permutations or ways you can draw five cards out of 52 if order is important. But again, in Kino, the order is not important. So we need to divide this by something. In particular, the number of ways you can order those five cards. So how many is that? Well, I think that answer is going to be known as five factorial. What is five factorial, you might ask? Well, let's say that the cards that you drew are a royal flush in spades. That ace of spades could have been the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth card in order. So there are five possibilities for the order in which you could have gotten that ace of spades. For the king of spades, there are four positions left that you might have drawn that from. For the queen of spades, there's three left. For the jack of spades, there's two left. And for the ten of spades, there's just one position left. So there are 120 orders for five items. And by the way, you don't need to do that every single time. There's a, in Excel, you use the factorial function, which is abbreviated as just fact. And in this case, the number of ways you can order five items is fact five. So the way to get the number of combinations of drawing five cards out of 52 is you take the number of permutations and divide by the number of orders. That gives you 2,598,960. However, Excel makes it a lot easier with the combin function. You do combin and then the number of items in the whole group, in this case 52, and then the number of, that you are picking, in this case, five. And there you get that same 2,598,960. And by the way, if order did matter to you, you would use the permute function. And that gives you that same number we got up here in cell A1. So there's your crack course in combinatorial mathematics. And again, um, this is the end of the video. Hope you liked it and I'll see you in another video.